Indie animation is a genre I find very hard to describe without using family dinners as an example. Very specific, I know, I'd need to get it checked out. Indie animation is like a family dinner every Christmas. Every year it gets just a little bit more refined with a few new family members you don't really recognize and are kind of put off by. The one uncle who always brings over a new partner every year and swears that this is the one guys. Universally a great time until one of your aunties makes a comment that sets off your mother who sets off your grandma. They leave and then the game of telephone begins where Aunt Janice definitely stole mom's potato salad recipe and Uncle Jeff's girlfriend is 100% on a no flight list. I'm sorry, I'm venting. I wasn't kidding with my description of indie animation though. Every year, the quality of shows being released is getting better and better and also more sustainable as an actual way to live. Just a decade ago, it would have been a miracle to have one of these series be popular enough to fund a teen. But now, in 2024, indie animations exploding in popularity is just normalized to the point where we frequently get tweets from the diehard fans who followed the creator since birth, dreading the fact that their series is <gasps> mainstream. Why, Lord? Why, Lord, why? It's a rising tide, and I love that. Any way for creators to be their own bosses while still having enough income to live is wonderful, and the true American dream. And like I said before, it wasn't always like this. Thanks to countless creators, we now are in a position where we can enjoy things like the amazing digital circus without having to worry about some big corpo cancelling it for taxes. While I'm personally for creators doing their own thing and avoiding working with big companies, some people still do aspire to put their show on network television, or get a two season deal with Netflix before they inevitably cancel it for no reason. You can't keep getting away with it! Yes, I'm still mad about Inside Job. And that was the approach that Vivian Mendrano or Vivzipop took. Vivzy Pop, for the elderly folk who watch my videos, is the sole creator of Has Been Hotel and Hell of a Boss, and one of the first true indie animation success stories. Both of her big works inspired people to make a lot of fan content for the show, which was very strange considering the show at the time had literally one episode available, and it was a pilot. Okay, that's not really that insane considering I own a Pomni plushie with only the pilot out, but at least Digital Circus was good. While I personally thought that the Husband Hotel pilot was bad, a lot of people didn't, and it put a lot of eyes onto Vivzi and her projects. And unfortunately, all of her skeletons in the closet as well. There is a rule I like to follow whenever I get involved in any series, and that is, unless your name is Toby Fox, you have done something wrong in the past. Vivzi Pop is no exception. This, to me, is something that kind of just happens when someone gets famous enough. But with Vivzi Pop, it was different. A lot of these claims actually did have weight to them, but were being signal boosted by so many people that they got lost and warped around into something that they weren't, which is what plagued a lot of my first video on this. After 7 months, I'm still on the line of is this a bad video because I've changed as a person or is this a bad video because I perpetuated stupid drama, and I still don't have a proper answer yet. But this video is my attempt to explain something I can only call the Vivzipop effect. Did you think I was going to explain that now? We're only about so so minutes in the video, so we're a bit too early for that one pal. So let's get started. Oh right, blah blah, look at these analytics, yada yada, please subscribe, join the discord and follow my socials. Thank you. I spend a lot of time sitting at my computer procrastinating, making videos, and while my original regular desk was fine, it doesn't compare to the E7 Pro. One of the main issues I had was constantly having to stand up to stretch, disturbing my workflow. But with this desk, I can do both. Using this cup of water, I'm going to test how wobbly the desk is while I type, while it's in standing mode. Do you see that? Barely anything. That's insane. It can also lift up to 440 pounds. I had the desk lift me and it didn't even slow down while rising. I think that this thing could beat Goku. The benefit of this desk is that it allows me to sort out my crappy ass posture without disrupting any of the process, while still being insanely affordable for a standing desk with full hydraulics. 
Now I can yell at people in CSGO while standing at peak height for maximum intimidation. So check out Fluxysport.com. They provide all kinds of desks and chairs to suit whatever you might need. Get a discount if you use my promo code linked in the description. Click on that and enjoy a free discount on whatever you end up buying. Anyhow, back to the video. Surprisingly enough, Vivzy Pop has done other things beside has been and Helliver. Her first proper project was an animation called Blenderstein. Or or Blender Stein, I'm stupid. She didn't make this considering the animation likes Vivzy's dog shit humor, Vivzy's funny and entertaining humor. The creator of Blender Stein would actually go on to be one of the primary creators of Long Gone Gulch, which is another super popular indie cartoon. Vivzy Pop from early on did want to create her own IP, and her first notable creation was a webcomic called Zoophobia, which didn't receive much, if any, attention and was practically forgotten by the time Zootropolis released. For Foreshadowing is a narrative device in which a storyteller gives an advanced hint on what is to come later in the story. The term foreshadowing was coined in the late 1500s but didn't really catch on until the 19th century. This will come up in the homework later, so please keep that in mind. Vivzy would post different types of videos infrequently to her channel, until she built up the funds to make a studio called Spindlehorse Tunes, and this, if you ignore the sweat and tears of underpaid animators, is where the magic happened. This is the studio that made has been hotel and as a result is the studio responsible for ruining my life exclusively has been hotel exploded in popularity when it released it has 100 million views at the time of recording and humans kind of stop being able to process numbers when they get that big for an example that is the Wembley Stadium filled a hundred times this pilot was a complete success from wait a minute a hundred times this pilot was a complete success from every angle in in fact, it was so big that Amazon picked it up and actually gave it a budget. Wow! I've said this before, but considering there was a four year wait before an episode of Has Been would air, and it was still talked about all the time, fans were locked in for this, for better or for worse. Obligatory hell of a boss mention. Anyway, this show really struck a chord with neurodivergent people. I don't say this as an insult or anything. I have ADHD myself and cry myself to sleep every night because my biggest hyperfixations are washed. I point it out to show that the levels of interested people were into the series. A lot of children made it their entire personality and so did a lot of adults and I do understand why. It's a pretty cool concept and can really get the creative vision growing. Obviously there was so much praise sent the show's way and with that also comes a much less desirable part of that attention. When any creator gets big enough there will be a very vocal part of the internet that will hold the creator accountable for their actions. This in concept is amazing. Having a group of people on the internet dedicated to keeping you honest sounds like a dream. In concept however. Yeah it doesn't really work like that. If you've been on the internet for a long enough period of time you know what an anti is. Vivzy Pop had her own antis and while a lot of them made genuinely good points there were also people dedicated to hating Vivzy Pop because they they didn't like the show or didn't like the fan base for being annoying? I mean, sure, it's your choice, but I think there are much more valid reasons to hate her. Vivzy Pop aunties are either the most correct people in the room or completely fucking deranged. There is no middle ground. You will have a very thoughtful post actually bringing awareness to something and then a bunch of turds crying about something that isn't even real. And this finally lets me talk about the Vivzy Pop effect. Let's go back to Zoophobia for a second. Vivzy Pop actually romanticizes Zoophilia in this comic with the drawing of an underage character having sex with a snake. Now, compare this to her hiring a storyboard artist who is into non-corn and has vocalized that publicly. Both of these are bad, but what if I told you that one of these statements isn't real? This is the Vivzy Pop effect. Everything said about her is taken completely seriously, regardless of a lack of evidence or actual stuff she's being called out on isn't taken seriously because of how many times people have just lied or twisted up a situation to make everything look worse. This has been happening for years and it's created this weird culture where both Vivzy Pop antis and Vivzy Pop defenders look ridiculous for the claims made for and against Vivzy Pop. I feel like this is a thing that needed to be explained before I could even move on to the main part of this video, because there are so many of these posts that are either 100% believed without evidence or ignored because, nah, -uh, you were wrong the first time. Shut 
With this out of the way, I can finally talk about why the internet hates Vivzi. No, I can't. If I want to be completely fair and come to a conclusion that personally satisfies me, I have to first talk about the false claims against Vivzi Pop. The reason talking about this is important is so a lot of the murkier stuff is cleared up which then allows both me and the viewer to look for and focus on the stuff that actually matters. I think the first thing I want to bring up is the idea that Vivzi Pop tried to sue Disney at one point. This is obviously not true because nobody in their right mind would ever try to do something so stupid. Disney is a multi-billion dollar company who could probably money their way out of genocide or something. Considering people were saying she was trying to do this in 2019, you know, the year before the release of Has Been Hotel, I don't buy it. Disney is a piece of shit company, don't get me wrong, but their monopoly over the animation industry cannot be ignored. A lot of really well-known animators are working or have done work with Disney. Trying to sue them would just blacklist you from life. Vivzi Pop said as much herself. Do I even need to dignify this one? No, I never did this. Why on earth would I ever do that? I was emotional over the title. I have since posted nothing but support and love for the movie. I have also explained in detail in past years why I was emotional about the movie. Never that I had bitterness for or felt any legal right to the concept. I do want to point out that Vivzi in recent years hasn't been the most reliable narrator. I wouldn't even trust her to recite her morning breakfast without telling me a lie or twisting something, but more on that later. Regardless of that fact though, I do think that she isn't lying about this due to the reasons I have already mentioned. No intelligent animator would blacklist their name from the company most associated with animation. Around the same time, there were murmurs about racism and transphobia. I'm black, not trans. I, I would put on the maid dress again just to say that I was for a sweet own on the libtards. But my parents watch these videos and I get the feeling they're already plenty disappointed in me already. This was regarding the fact that Vivzi had made fan art for Blair White. Wait, how does that make her racist? While my internet was down, a friend said to me that I shouldn't confuse ignorance for malice. In that case, she was wrong, but it was a fire line and it is what I believed happened here. Blair White has over a million people in her audience and is also a massive nink and nink. I think I'm the fucking nink and poop here. <laughs> like, God. I'm not really sure if it's my place to say this, but people can just bat for the wrong side without knowing all the context. It is entirely reasonable that Vivzi Pop wasn't aware of Blair White's racism and transphobia. I feel like a lot of people are like that with a lot of creators, especially when they are so big and one of the only quote unquote big trans creators. You can hate me if you want. You can think that I'm not the glowing, perfect creator everyone seems to expect me to be nowadays. I have made plenty of mistakes. I can be sarcastic. I can be kinda bitchy on bad days on social media. Sometimes I make dumb jokes or or mistakes online. Sometimes I have dumb opinions on things. Everyone does. But don't drag up shit from two years ago like it's relevant now. Things I didn't do. I'm not responsible for edgy jokes made by others. To be honest, a lot of what I've talked about has put me on Vivzi's side, but here is where things get a little bit more gray. Pedophilia. Okay, I feel like I've come on a bit too strong. This is another unfortunate thing that creators get accused of all the time. Like Dream. I made a video on that, guys. You should watch it. Anyway, Vivzi was accused on multiple occasions of accusations of being a nonce or defending nonces because weirdos on Twitter pulled out the I know you are, but what am I when I said only a few of my takes, I'm going to spend the least amount of time on this as possible. Firstly, her character called Mirage made her a pedo because Mirage was a pedo and therefore, okay, I think we've gotten a little lost here. So like, does this apply to every character who does criminal actions? I'm very confused here. Why is this a problem? I get the concept that the character could be uncomfortable or that Vivzi was romanticizing a very dark topic. But straight up, the first thing it says on the wiki is that this character is an antagonist. The main antagonist of the fucking comic. You know, 
the bad guy <laughs> and i know this isn't a false claim but it is something i want to touch on now that i'm a little more educated on the topic pro shipping is weird and vivzy pop following pro shippers makes a lot of people raise a few eyebrows because as i literally just said those niggas are weird i'm choosing my words oh so carefully so a group of unwashed adults don't castrate me for telling them the unfortunate truth however something occurred to me that kind of recontextualizes how i view stuff like that if you you aren't like two stages too deep on the internet what the fuck even is a pro shipper like be serious for a second do you think a single ceo at amazon knows what a pro shipper is i don't know if i'm wording myself correctly here but what i'm trying to say is that if you don't like pro shippers you don't have to accept them because i sure don't however considering everything else i just don't think this is that big of a deal i don't know if that's because i've become cold and jaded after all my heroes have let me down oh so much but that's honestly Honestly, just how I feel about Vivzy Pop being a pro shipper. Like, if you don't like her, then use something that more likely is gonna stick because there's actually proof of those things. More on that later. And uh, that's all for the stuff that I personally don't think people should be hounding Vivzy Pop for. So now we can start off really small and talk about all of these responses. Good God! <laughs> I had to reinstall Twitter to get a lot of these screenshots I put up in this video. And while doing research into everything, I kind of had a nervous breakdown watching someone else make the same mistakes I made when I was 16 and just started making videos. And that is constantly responding to anyone who says anything bad about the show. Of course, this is an over-exaggeration. A more accurate description is responding to a bunch of, with all due respect to Blue Euphoria Sky, nobodies because who the fuck is blue euphoria sky a suspended account okay right i do get the want to shoot down a lot of bad faith criticism levied at you but people saying your humor is shit which it is by the way isn't really grounds to make a big response about it is it fair that a bunch of people get to say all of this stuff about a show you care a lot about no Definitely not. But responding to one person's bit of criticism about your show emboldens a bunch of idiots to make the same critique and then get uppity if you don't respond. And more importantly, you have to remember that the site you're receiving this criticism on is Twex, owned by Elon Musk. Wait, who, who said that? For every one bit of actual valid criticism given, you're going to get like 15 other people making bad faith ones. If you want to look at actual criticism, read some letterbox reviews or something and stop responding to people who say your jokes aren't funny. Sorry for that tiny rant. I just had to share my pain with all of you for a moment because not only has my hours on Twitter shot back up, but I almost made a tweet. Like, what the hell? After 10 whole pages of clearing up a bunch of stupid misconceptions, I can finally justify this video's title. I feel like one thing we all really hate is having something we worked hard on being rejected or ignored. It sucks a lot, and anyone who has ever made anything knows the feeling. If you say that you haven't, you're lying, and you'll be put in jail for three turns. Something I think people hate more is having their work be super popular and not being credited for it. Hell, I was credited for for my work and I still feel like Nuxtaku robbed me with his reaction to one of my old videos. Vivzy Pop is someone who's been working in this industry for over a decade and I would assume she would understand how much that would suck. I was wrong, unfortunately. This covers the blatant mistreatment both her employees and former friends received during the creation of Hasbin Hotel and her biggest screw up after the show began airing. So let's start with the wages of the Hasbin employees. The average pay for someone doing cleanups for the show is $60 a second. Wow, I hear you say. That sounds really good. I wish I could earn that much money per second. I mean, I am. You're about to watch an ad. Welcome back. Like I was saying, those aren't really good wages because it's 60 USD per animated second. Hell of a boss is animated at 12 frames per second, meaning that you have to do cleanups for 12 individual drawings for $60. What the fuck? Most artists have people paying $50 for a single sketch. And these poor cleanup artists are making 12 for 60 Scratch that actually. Due to budget cuts on one of the episodes, artists' wages were basically cut in half. And also, keep in mind that the animators aren't paid for any of their work that doesn't go into the show. So if you do corrections that don't make it into the show, just get bent in it. This post was about cleanup artists, not storyboarders or anything like that. But cleaning up is a hard job. 
an example used in this thread is stuff like this. That's pretty hard work. And she has a Patreon goal to pay them properly. What is happening? I'm sure MAPA employees are destroying their monitors seeing these amazing wages, which actually lets me go on a little tangent. Animators are paid pennies for one of the hardest jobs in the world. Animating takes a while and these aren't five minute shorts. These are half an hour episodes, 21,600 frames that these people have to correct. That's a dollar fifty per frame and you aren't paid hourly. Do you know how long it takes to draw? Cleanup work apparently takes twice as long as the original animation. These are slave wages. A common argument used against this is that this was way above industry standard. Here are multiple tweets from MAPA employees stating that they want to die due to the poor working conditions at their company. The reason I bring this up is to show you how bad animators got it. If the industry standard is throwing an animator a penny, I'm not going to praise the person who decided to pay them way above industry standard and give them three pennies instead. That's stupid. Pay your animators properly, you piece of shit. People came out and said that they were treated really well by Spin Spindlehorse. As an animation member of Spindlehorse, hell of a boss. In my experience, I've never gotten overworked or anything close to a bad working environment. This is my first industry job and I love every second of it. I'm not sure about my co-workers but for me, it's good. And while some do believe they had a gun to their head to say this, I disagree. I believe that an animator was probably having a great time because they were actually given a wage. And that is something I messed up in in my first video because of my my own ignorance. Animation is complicated and has a lot of moving pieces and we should be supporting them now more than ever because their working conditions are only getting worse, especially in the east. Vivzi also has an issue with crediting her artists properly, if at all. Ken Draws made a whole document going into their mistreatment at the hands of Vivzi Pop. After they drew art for one of Vivzi's characters, she referenced it heavily in official artwork and didn't even credit Ken for any of it, despite saying how much she loved it and would credit them whenever they used it. Popped back on before heading to bed and ah, oh my gosh, you drew her so lovely, I love it, heart emoji. Also, your drawing of Cherry is so good. Can I walk off her pose for my final ref of her? Sure. Thanks. I'll credit you if I post it anywhere. I just love that post so much. Other lies we tell ourselves. This is the image used on the wiki and probably Cherry Bomb's most recognizable image. Where's the credit? Is Ken credited in the show for this? Not to my knowledge. Is Ken even credited on the wiki? Oh, well, you know, Vivzi Pop doesn't write the wiki, so it's not her fault. But she has done such a poor job crediting Ken when this character pops up that people just think she did this on her own. Ken talks about Vivzi stealing ideas, and what I won't budge on is the fact that it was was really small things like a character having a third eye and it's like come on. Ken said that Vivzi should credit anyone who helped her make the show and I made fun of them for that before but they were right. I think you should credit everyone who has had a hand in it every time because we're all in this together. If you just post it without that people will think it's all you. That's what people assume. You know this. You know your fans assume that you do everything on your lonesome. What's so funny to me is that because Ken was constantly asking Vivzi Pop to credit them properly, she ended up trying to paint a narrative that Ken was an abuser. Also, I don't mean to be a drama and it might be safer to unfollow her after the it blows over. I'm planning to reach out to most of our mutuals when it's done. Kendra is totally an abuser. They had a call out and I stood by them, but their recent actions have totally awakened to me that what I've endured. I just saw you were following them and wanted to warn you just in case they've tried or done anything to you. They are a monster. They are refusing to sign the has-been chain of title, which basically means the show's future is in their control. I'm ready to take them to court. We are trying to avoid that, obviously, but they are a monster. I've known them since I was underaged. They've been a horrid influence and I can't believe I left them on my project, let alone bullying me into writing credit. That's gonna be so me when I hire an 
an editor give them no credit they complain at me and i say they bullied me when i give them the credit the reason ken actually held off from signing anything is because they wanted to be credited correctly for their work and vivzi has a meltdown about this to someone else accusing them of being one of the worst things a human being could be with no evidence mind you which is so ironic because the first half of this video was me explaining why shooting false claims at someone was bad i don't want to just read off the doc so i've linked it in my sources document there is so much stuff i'm not talking about like the time vivzi said ken was posing as ace what is what is wrong with you at the exact same time vivzi was having super nice conversations with ken and we all know how much i love people being two-faced to people they dislike it blows and now that i have covered that ken stuff i just want to really say that i am very very sorry for the way i dismissed their original story that wasn't okay and i just perpetuated a bunch of false statements about ken because i really wanted to defend vivzi pop i was biased and may have made things worse for a person and i have felt guilty about it ever since i started looking back into this the next section covers some really serious topics and i would like to leave a trigger warning for people who aren't comfortable sitting through that stuff after the airing of has been hotel it was revealed that a person who has admitted to being into non-con if you don't know what that is don't look it up and click off the video the person who has admitted to this was in charge of storyboarding a scene where a character is sexually assaulted the main discourse i see is people who are sa survivors saying they have no issue of the scene and how other the ones do i think what people need to realize is that the scene itself could have been moving and maybe even closure for some people but the person who was in charge of the scene probably would have gotten off to that which is something i will criticize vivzi pop for heavily the possibility exists that vivzi pop didn't know what they were up to before hiring them but after people made it very clear to her this is not an appropriate response to have ever this place is just fucking embarrassing at this point y'all should come over to thread slash insta to me there is no defense for that instead of addressing what the issue was she ran off and then just pretended people were mad at her about the scene and not the person who likes non-con being the one who storyboarded it i wish i could be as fucking delusional as you life must be so good really also i have a threads account now i don't think i'm gonna use it but like it's there if you want to follow me or whatever this video wasn't going to be made a mere three months oh my god i'm slow as hell but after seeing just how bad i messed up in a lot of the sections of my original video and how quite frankly evil vivzi pop was in some of these situations i feel like the original video would just sit there collecting all of this negativity because i wasn't smart enough to actually see where vivzi pop was actually wrong and i want to spend this part of the video explaining why that was the vivzi pop effect is the concept that half of the things people are mad at vivzi pop for isn't actually that deep and allows people to dismiss a lot of her real problems because of all of the false calls beforehand. I feel like this is at least partially why things turned out the way they have now. Vivzi Pop has a million followers on Twitter and a lot of people speaking about her a hundred different ways every day. At a certain point, all of that noise becomes way too much to handle and you just start to block it all out. It gets harder and harder to really realize when you're actually in the wrong and when people are just being babies. And as a creator myself, I wanted to sympathize with her. I wanted to justify the way I handle all of the hate and negativity I receive by projecting it onto somebody else. And by doing that, I probably convinced a lot of people that Vivzi Pop can do no wrong and everyone mad at her were just insane, who have minor issues with her, like not being credited. Why did I say that? I just seven months ago i was a fucking idiot vivzi pop is a person who many people admire for showing everyone that it is possible to follow your dreams and actually make something of yourself while also rotting away on twitter but she is also one of the most immature catty and manipulative people on the internet who has managed to gaslight a lot of her fans into defending her when she was objectively in the wrong on multiple occasions she isn't just some plucky indie showrunner anymore she is now the main creator behind one 
one of the biggest shows in the world. She has an entire studio backing her and even had the most watched show on Prime Video once it started airing. Unfortunately, she lacks the maturity needed to run a show with her constantly needing to defend her show's writing and justify her terrible actions instead of admitting when she was wrong. This is only really because of the kind of parasociality allowed by platforms like Twitter, which is why I think it's really bad for her. But I also believe that people hounding her for the actual bad things she did do need a big platform to spread awareness about that stuff. It's a complicated situation and one that I am not smart enough to even begin to try and fix. But these are the main reasons why the internet hates Vivzy Pop. And hopefully this video acts as a way for people to focus on the parts that really matter. Thanks for watching. Oh, oh man, wasn't that such a good video? Uh, if you really liked it, you should consider subscribing, joining the Discord, following me on Twitter, even though I don't use it, following me on Instagram because I do use that very frequently now, and also Threads because I had to make an account to look at some of those Vivzy Pop tweets. If you're feeling extra super generous, you could give me all of your money. I donate five dollars to the channel membership, so you can get my videos up to a day early. Speaking of those five dollar memberships, you lot are. Great. I love you and that was weird I'm sorry I'm trying to kind of move away from the drama shit and kind of just talk about internet stuff in general and this is kind of like a demo to see if that works so I really hope you all enjoyed this video have a good day see you lads